Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. Guys, we got some pretty good news. We're back for another season. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. I'm, are y'all excited for this, man? I'm really excited. <laughs> Super excited, bro. Ain't it ironic that during free agency, we had someone not resign? Yeah, it's a three-man show. Um, sign us up for the th- big three league. I'm looking into the camera right now, and the optics of this are very weird now that Mike is not resigned. Yeah, we got to figure out our, our placement. You know, it may change over the next couple episodes because I feel like me and you are too far apart right now. But yeah. give us some time. We'll, we'll figure it all out. But uh, he's going to be show. missed. I never thought it would be my day one homie that just. And, and we, we don't want to get into specifics or anything. Yeah. Just know yeah. that this is the Through the Wire cast it's right a business. now. It's business. Um, but something's coming up pretty big for us. We're flying out to New York City to interview. An NBA player, yeah. which would be cool. So he'll be our fourth for right there. So that's you know, gonna be beautiful. It's a spot open. It's a spot Shout open. Shout out to HOH for making it happen for us. And we're still not telling who it is just yet. I went through this whole thing on Twitter. I gave people three different hints. And I'm gonna give y'all the same hints and let me know in the comment section who you think it is before the episode dropped. Hint number one was he's not a free agent. Hint number two, what was my hint number two? Oh, he's at the top of his craft. And hit number three, he is uh, at least a one time all star. So let us know in the comment section below who you think. That's what I said at least. Oh, sorry. See, I just just, just messed it up a little bit. So he is a multiple time All Star. So that's that's you trying to throw him off with the hints. Yeah, is he left handed or right handed? Oh, never mind. No, that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. Just know that I saw a thousand plus replies, and not even one person got it right. So I'm I'm ready to read the comments. Uh, One did. One did, but he's also an insider to the to the podcast, so he knew he was just throwing throwing it out there. But luckily, nobody saw it. But. Let's get into this. Yeah. Free agency. Yeah. Um, first things first. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're literally breaking news from Shams. This is how it's about to go, our next podcast, because yes. our next podcast is the first day of free agency, basically. Clay Thompson and the Golden State Warriors plan to reach an agreement on a five year, 190 max contract. That's evident. Yeah. I I don't, I yeah. What was that yesterday? But this is like official, Confirm. official. Okay. Yeah. Um, because y'all know Wolves did the whole thing. Y'all saw that Reddit post about Wolves showing favoritism to um the Los Angeles Clippers. Really? Remember, he reported that Clay is gonna do an interview with them or, or meet if with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that it, false? I mean, I now mean, now it is. <laughs> he got that paper. We, we yeah, we would have never known if it was false or true because I always assumed that he was gonna get his offer. Yeah, yeah from the start. Um, which is which is smart, and they even pushed um. Sean Livingston deadline for his uh his little guarantee contract. So shout out to Sean Livingston. Mm-hmm. Uh, he trying to get his players back so he can win more rings. So I respect that. But the thing that I wanted to start off with about free agency was the fact that out of nowhere, one of the the the, uh, the thought to be most not most sought out, but after the top guys, Darren Collison. Yeah, very yeah. yeah. man, came out That's- of nowhere. That was legit just a curveball out of nowhere. That was not expected. Because he was expected to make like 10 plus million a year yeah. because there's so much money around and so many people need like quality point guards. Yep. And that's what Darren Collison is. I was looking back at his stats and like two years ago, he basically led the league in three point percentage. Granted, he was only taking like two or three a game, so it wasn't a high volume guy. But he's one of the most knockdown shooters in the league a few years ago. And it was due to his faith. Yeah. So we can't say anything about it. It was his yeah. faith. And um I wish him nothing Gotta but the best that. in retirement. Gotta yeah. respect that ten year career, uh, quality backup point guard for majority of that, but was also a starting star guard. Mm-hmm. Um, UCLA Bruin. Yep. Um, and was yeah was was good. And he's only thirty one years old, which yeah. is which is crazy because he, he had, had a lot left. Yeah, in my opinion, he had like five more years left. Because we were actually talking about on the show, they're like, what are some point guard options for the Lakers if they and wanted to was, get yeah. multiple he was pieces? So he was one of the guys, yeah, he was probably going to be the best fit because. You know, I don't think Kyrie is going back. And, mm-hmm. you know, Kimba and LeBron and AD all trying to work together. You don't know. But he can play off, play on. So that was a, that was a curveball. I'm actually surprised that doesn't happen more often. Because at the at the end of it, when we talk about our job, because that's what that is for these NBA players. It's their job. Your goal is to make enough money so you can retire young. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and when people retire at 35... 36. That's young compared to the it rest is. of the world. Yeah. I mean, my, my dad is going to be 50 soon and he's still working and he got no plans of retirement soon. So Same. I plan on doing this like even after. Oh, trust yeah. me. Trust me. Through the wire is going to be here. But it's just, it's just weird that, you know, making millions and millions of dollars. And I know most of these people do it because they love the game. But at the same time, it's more of a... 
a job at the end of the day. Yeah, Jimmy Butler came out like last year and said that he doesn't want to play past 35. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's a rumor that Kyrie was saying he want to retire when he's like 32. So (laughs) this next contract um, might be it. Yeah, (laughs) might actually be his last. And and quite honestly, I kind of halfway believe it when you hear from Kyrie Irving because he's so all over the place. He's so passionate about other things other than basketball. (laughs) Yeah, he is. And but he also flip flops a lot. Getting into Kyrie Irving, I'm gonna just come out and say this right now. I think Kyrie Irving is next year is going to have the year we thought he was going to have this year. I think um, the criticism, I think his his uh, his moments of poor leadership, um, and just reflecting on a whole Boston situation and how he acted uh, when leaving Cleveland, I think he's going to take all of that, reflect, and come back and have a very strong year. Now, of course, the height of that that season depends on where he goes mm-hmm. yeah. and who he's playing with and things like that but in a sense of him actually playing and and um competing I think we're going to see a much better year and I'm not I'm not really I'm not really um sold that Kyrie Irving is just like this disappointing guy like I I'm continue to say it I think that Boston situation was very very weird for all of them involved and I kind of give all of them a pass including Brad Stevens I know a lot of people was kind of like we were looking at him as one of the top coaches, which was crazy. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying he was ever like Greg Popovich, even though people was prematurely saying that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm also not going to pretend like he just ain't shit no more. Um, and the same thing with the other players. You know, I think Jason Tatum will bounce back. I think it's good that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum can now be the focal point of it. Um, you know, also leading to another topic on here, the Kimball Walker. Yeah, um, that's so funny to is, me. <laughs> is is I in there and um you know Horford is gone, so I think Robert Williams, a young sitter that they drafted last year, can get more opportunity. And I I think they just on on pace to have you know a better situation without mm-hmm. Kyrie and Kyrie having a better situation so, without them. I always wanted this question, and I, I may have posed this question to y'all before, but as the okay, we're gonna take different perspectives. As a fan of the team, let's say you're a fan of the Boston Celtics, they signed Kimball Walker, right? That team. Is not a championship team. They're right? a playoff team. They're a playoff team, right? They're, they're yeah. probably what a four or five seed. You know, basically yep. what they were this year. You just basically substituting Al Horford and Kyrie for Kemba. That's that does probably doesn't equal more wins. As a fan, does that make you happy just to be a good team, but maybe not a great team? It's two type of fans. It's the fan that doesn't understand that 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 uh that viewpoint that you just gave, and then there's the the fan that's really in it that knows. Yeah, it's a big name, but does it equal to more wins? Yeah. So it's like the the fan that's like, I, I don't know. I guess it's a casual fan will probably know. Oh, well, we lost Kyrie, but we do we got another All Star back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't. I, I wouldn't be happy because I know it doesn't equal to the wins. Yeah. Okay. The ultimate thing. So let's say front office then. Your front office guy. Oh, we got Kimball Walker. We got another guard that we can put up on the stands. You see Kimball Walker jerseys. You'll probably sell tickets again. From that standpoint, are you okay with just being a good team and maybe not a great team? I think I think front offices look at it differently. I think they look at it more so as like a money aspect that Kimball's going to bring in revenue. the attention mm-hmm. and the revenue and the ticket prices can go up again. And then they'll always be competitive, but they'll just never be that good. And it depends on the front office. Do some front offices want to be – Championship contenders are some of them okay with just coasting. Because, yeah, even just coasting, you make millions of dollars for your, like, yep. revenue and stuff. So I, I just wanted that because I see a lot of fans that are like, championship or bust, championship or bust. But I think there is some value with just being good and just yeah. being fun. Like, those Bulls teams that we we didn't grow up with because we were already old. But, yeah. like, the Derrick Rose, Jimmy Butler. They were always so right man. there. They were fun. Yeah. You know, and even though we never reached that pinnacle, we can always look back in that time and be like, man... I enjoyed that team. It that was super team fun was to watch. Always one piece away. You know, yep. they had the Ronnie Brewers one year, Rip Hamilton, mm-hmm. they could ne- Keith Bogan. They tried them if, all. If they could, they could never just hit it on the head. Well, no, that, we had that, that one year where we were on pace, but then Derrick Rose tore his ACL. Yeah, that was oh, the yeah. year we had the. But even then, I, I I can't I can't say we had the best bench in the league that year. We would have, but to, y'all didn't have the best team. We would have had to go against Bron though. Yeah, eventually, eventually, Bron, eventually Bron was going to step up. Bron, Bosh, and you know, so I just always think that's interesting because I'm not saying the people that think championship Shout out John or bust, Salmons as well. The people that think that championship or bust, I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I just think there is some value with just being good, but not like yeah. mediocre good. I'm not saying Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. That's oh, there's yeah. no value in like that. Like Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers is a perfect example, yeah. right? That there's value in just being a constant playoff team, and then eventually maybe that year comes where you hit the conference finals, or you, or you get you that free agent, finals. or that free agent be like, oh, I, I want to be that missing piece. I think that the Portland Trailblazers 
um, off season is about to be amazing. I and think we'll so talk too. about that when we get to it. Or you get a chance. You know, you're not going to because you never want to hope this. And maybe you don't even as a competitor want to win like this, but you don't control those type of things. But now when you have a Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant potentially out for a year, you have now a year where you have to go for it. Yeah. Now the window's open for everybody. Yes. And um, as far as the Boston Celtics, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really that much of a fan of it um, unless they have something else in their back pocket that I don't know. But I think, I think because... Um, Tatum Brown, uh, Smart, Rozier had such a good run without Kyrie. Just get do it again. You know what I mean? Just do it again. Um, I, now, I, I understand from that aspect, you got to think about how much you would have to pay Rozier because mm-hmm. he's a restricted free agent. Somebody might throw him something ridiculous. I feel like the Bulls are going to um, be the guys. I feel like the Hornets will be, especially if they lose Kemba. They have they, in they him. can lose Kemba and Jeremy Lamb this season. Yeah, so. and so they'll they'll be real desperate. Because um, both of those guys are quality players that can quality, fit in. Quality. Mm-hmm. That's why it is so crazy because it, it's – that's why the front office shit is so important, mm-hmm. what, what you just were saying, because you have two guys like there who if you just put a little extra around that right there, they be good. Yeah. That team was, was hanging in there to be in the playoffs last year with Kemba and just him. Basically, Malik Monk didn't really – he played better, but he didn't he didn't have a sophomore year that I, that I was hoping he would have. Yeah. Michael Kidd Gilchrist is, I guess, a, a cool guy, but he's not nobody that's – He's a quality player, but that, yeah. nothing much more than that. And I'm not sure if he's the best fit for a Kemba Walker type guy. No. Uh, Marvin Williams was more effective next to Kemba than him. And then you 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 drafted Cody Zeller. He, he was a lottery pick. I never mm-hmm. saw the potential of him being an all-star. Um, you know, Miles Bridges was a solid pick. And then you draft a PJ Washington, who I think would be good if you still had a Kimba. But if you lose Kimba, I'm not sure PJ Washington is is, you know, how effective he can be. I think I think that's why our show is great. Cause me and you have such different opinions uh, on a lot of stuff. Cause when you're draft if you were front office, you're drafting for potential. Like this yeah. guy can maybe someday depending be a star. What, depending on what my team is. Right. Okay. Because the Hornets are ass. So yeah. they always <laughs> draft the potential. So okay, let me I'm thinking. But they about have a bad history of drafting. Cody Zell was the fourth pick. Okay. Now that click on that. Click on 2013. 2013. And in hindsight 2020. Hindsight but is I'm 2020. just telling y'all, because I've been watching college basketball since I was seven years old. So these are the picks right after them. Alex Lynn, Nerlens Noel, um, Ben McLemore, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Trey Burke, and then you get to CJ McCollum who ended up being very good and then Giannis was 15. So this draft class on its own was not good. That's fine. But a lot of a lot a lot of these guys can play basketball. And a lot of times when it's NFL and NBA especially because MLB has minor league systems. Mm-hmm. A lot of times the careers of these players Go a certain way based on where they're drafted. Yeah, one hundred percent. So you look at a guy like um, you want to go back to twenty thirteen. Yeah, my bad. Uh, twenty thirteen. You look at a guy like Ben McLemore who went seventh, Sacramento, but he went to Sacramento. Yeah. Who had Thomas uh, Robinson was the fourth, fifth overall pick for them. They drafted Jimmer with a lottery pick. That was just a bad situation. Yeah. Who knows if you put him next to Kemba, mm-hmm. what that could be? I, I I would have one potential with that. Than Cody Zeller. Yeah. I could have told I told you from I don't want to say I told you, but like <laughs> I was saying when me and my homie was watching this draft, and I, I even remember calling my pops like, yo, they just took Cody Zeller at four. Cody Zeller was cool in college, but I mean, sheesh. Cody Zeller? Well, yeah, they're the worst drafting team in this decade, you know? Um, right in front of the Suns. But this yeah. this team, that's why I hope that they break the curse with PJ Washington. Cause we, I automatically be like, oh well, he's not going to be anything because he's playing for the Hornets, yeah. and, and they got you know they got MJ, who's MJ's not calling the shots, but he has a part in it at yeah. least. So I don't know the Hornets' future. They're probably going to be the worst team in the league next year if Kemba Walker and Jeremy Lamb leaves. But not probably. They they will be the worst team in the league, I would guess, unless you get a breakout from Dwayne Bacon or Malik Monk. One of those guys step up. Which they have to. You have to. Bank we don't on know. It, man. You have to. They they one of those dudes have to step up. Um, if you're Kemba, are you resigning? No, I've been, I don't I've been think so either. No, and especially when to. I heard the rumor of uh, them, them not offering him, him sixty million less. I yeah. know he said he would take less, but sixty million less is, is that's coming. ridiculous. Yeah. That's, think that's about all he's ridiculous. done for that season. But now that goes to the season. part of loyalty. Why is he? He's loyal to the team that wouldn't even give him everything that he's given everything nah. to. Right. Yeah. And so then it's crazy. like, I'm not coming back to, to a team and taking $60 million less for y'all to just give it to Cody Zeller and Michael <laughs> Kidd. Exactly. I'm sorry, because even after they drafted Cody Zeller, he got an, ex- he got an extension. Yeah, pretty big one too. Yeah. <laughs> he got an extension. Jordan signed him to the Jordan brand. Like all those guys get drafted <laughs> and go to the Jordan brand. It's just weird over there. 
And um, like for example, the Hornets they took PJ Washington, who I think is a very solid player. Kind of reminds me of like uh, David West. I was hearing somebody say, and I was like, oh shit, a modern day David West. Um, but I had him like a Markeith Morris type guy in our generation. And at twelve, if you end up getting Markeith Morris, this, that's not terrible. Seku, yeah. I love Seku. I would have taken him with the twelfth pick because, because that's that's a project, and you got nothing for your future anyway. You might as well just try to go boom a bust. Boom, and he's the youngest player in the draft with mm-hmm. a bunch of potential. And, and if Kimba leaves, you hand him like the uh, the keys Bro. and just let him mold. I, into- I watched his pro day like workout. He was draining them, and they like he one of his shot. one of his question marks though was like his shooting ability. And then he came to the workout, and he was like, "No, I can shoot the ball. I just didn't do it while I was overseas. Yeah, I can shoot." And they say he, he can he, handle. He, yes, he he's like pass good. <laughs> yes, he's good, mm-hmm. and he might be a project because again, I think he's just nineteen. He was literally the youngest guy in the draft. Yep, that's a guy I would have drafted. One hundred percent. You see the you see the Pistons took him. He's not a small forward. He's a power forward. Yeah, they say fuck it. We going best player available. Uh huh. Blake and DeAndre are good, but they're probably not going to be here for too long because they can't win together. So somebody's going to have to go. And they're probably I hope be, it's Blake. Be Blake. Mm-hmm. They're, they're probably like, man, we can't have him just not killing himself in here. Yeah. So I would have taken him. And, and we even see them in Milwaukee. The Bucks did it with Greek Freak. Yeah. yeah. And it turned out to be spectacular. Like, who the hell is that? Let's just take this dude who's a project and just, uh, you know, f- 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 I don't know, foaming with yeah. potential yeah. and go let him have it. And boom. And, but, you know, I, I got to cut him some slack because they didn't know they was going to have P.J. Washington. Um, I don't even know how he even got him. I don't know how. Because we were talking about him with the with the Celtics. I think the Celtics next season. Let's say they do get Kemba, which is rumored that they're the front runner, whatever. Um, which is still so funny. It is, it is crazy to think about the, the point guard rotation they had. Isaiah Thomas, MVP candidate that one year. Then they get Kyrie Irving, who we all agree is the top three point guard in the league. And then they get Kemba Walker. Like, like their point guard rotation has been crazy over the last four years. I but mean, Do you think Terry Rozier leaves if they sign Kemba? 100%. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Without a doubt. Even if he didn't want to leave the Boston Celtics. They're like, no, nah, we're not matching. Yeah. Even if it's two years, 10 million. They're oh, like, yeah. no, nah, we good. Is there any teams that would be better for Kemba? For so. Kemba? Dallas? Dallas would be Dallas yes, great. Dallas is the one. That was the one yep. I, I thought would be the front one. Him, Luca, Porzingis. And I, I, I still, I still think that they, they're probably going to have. A, they're probably going to get him. I think they're going to have a good free agency. But there's also rumors that they're the ones that promised Al Horford that four year contract. I like that too. See, they're in a win win situation because if you go that route, Luca's just your ball handler. You got Porzingis and Alfred, uh, Al Horford, mm-hmm. high IQ passing, shooting, uh, defensive. That defensive front court will be crazy. Yeah, because. Um, Porzingis <laughs> is a shot blocker and Al Horford is a paint protector. Yep. So it's and just like the perfect match. And they both can shoot. You don't <laughs> like, have to pressure Porzingis into playing center coming off the injury, uh-huh. which is something he doesn't want to do. So, you know, and now you give Luca the ability to have a, the, the uh, floor spaced. And now he can, he don't even have to be high usage because Al Horford is such a good elbow passer and Porzingis can be in a corner if you have a Horford at the elbow. Pick and roll with either or. They both can. That's just crazy. Yeah, this is going to be obvious. We're going to see in the week from now, obvious winners and losers of free agency. Sacramento loses if they give Barnes that oh, it's, oh, it's contract. Done. It's a done deal. <laughs> yeah, let's but, talk about that. But, <laughs> let's talk about that. See, it is an overpay, right? We can yeah. all agree that they paid Sometimes him Sometimes we have to do that, though. Exactly. That's that's my point. But is he a player worth overpaying for? They're, who else could they get, though, realistically? They don't Sacramento? have. They, nobody's going to Sacramento uh, for an interview. I'm really curious to why Kali Stott <laughs> or asking yeah. out. Why is he asking out? I don't know. Nobody's taking minutes from him. They didn't draft the center. Oh, Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley. And, and then there were there were rumors that uh, Bagley wanted to play the five more anyway. Yeah. And then they still have Harry Giles, who they believe is going to be good one day. So maybe we'll look at all this now. like, he, I mean, he did the, I'm quitting. I'm not fired. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we will see obvious winners of free agency. But the Harrison Barnes thing, sometimes you have to do that. They made yeah. the trade for him at the trade deadline. They knew that his contract was going to be up. Well, they didn't give up shit for him. They, they, they gave up no. Justin, Justin Jackson. Jackson. And basically, that's that, they gave up some, Maybe a some dead money. Okay. They gave up yeah. some dead money. Uh, but I think that fit-wise, he, he, he works does with fit. the team. And they weren't going to get interviews from anybody else. So let's break back our guy. And uh, But I think that we're about to go in a direction similar to 2016, but maybe not to that extreme because there's people are smarter now. Yeah. But like those quality players, and Harrison Barnes is a quality one, you're going to overpay him. Uh, JJ Reddick will get another, another, overpaid. another we're time. We're going to be like, whoa. <laughs> we're going to be like, whoa. Because you need those those guys who could just do those spe- specialists in the NBA mm-hmm. are getting bags. Yeah. Just being a shooter will get you a lot of money in the league today. 
just being a rebounder, just being a shot blocker. Somebody like Dwayne Detman might make a lot of money because, hey. You know who I think is about to make a lot of money? And we're going to be like, wait, what? Maybe not a lot, but a lot for him, Maxi Kleber. Oh, yeah, from the, the Mavericks. Because yeah. he had one of the highest shot block percentages in the league this year. He didn't play many minutes. Mm-hmm. And he can shoot the ball. He's like the modern guy, but we just don't know. I think he's already 28, so we Dallas don't know. Dallas fans love him. They yeah. know. If he ain't coming back, he's a fan <laughs> favorite out there. He's like... Uh, you know, that guy that didn't play a lot, but all the fans love. So if he mm-hmm. don't come back. Like a Brian Scalabrini. Shout out to my boy Max Levy. He going to be pissed if he don't go back. Yeah, I, of I, I feel like he's going to be one of those guys because he just, he run the four or the five. He just seemed like a quality player. But I wanted to talk about the Portland Trailblazers because I did bring it up before I forget. Um, with the door being wide open in the Western Conference, mm-hmm. and maybe it's not that wide open because of what the Lakers have done, and we're, we'll talk True. about that. Um, it's damn. It's... They can make the trade for like a Kevin Love. Yes. And not even yeah. have to give up that much. They need to. Because the Cavs, the Cavs do value Kevin Love. But what do they value more? Future assets. So you throw in future assets, a couple first round picks. I don't know if you throw in Azir Little. I mean, he he's a he, he's got the potential to be great. So I don't know if you mm-hmm. want to do that. But some first round picks, you give them some dead money, you throw in Miles Leonard, just so the Cavs don't have that big ass contract on their books. Yeah. You may have a deal. And right now, with the Warriors being down, this is the time to make that deal because you know Kevin Love will fit perfectly. At that I point. also like the fit of Tobias Harris. I would like for them to try to make a shot at him. I but feel like he would be. Where did the money come in from him? The only, I know they would like, have to make money, so they would have to trade the same Harkless. future assets with first round picks attached I think or second more round picks attached. That you trade for Kevin Love, yeah. Already under contract, Tobias so they, he fits. There's no timeline because now is a timeline, but yeah. I think that and if I miss seeing Kevin Love like playing that. basketball at a high level. Mm-hmm. The games he played in Cleveland, I didn't give a damn about. I don't even remember. I'm pretty sure he doesn't give care. a damn about those games um, either. It's like twenty two games, he's like. Fuck and then it's yeah. Now it's like every time he gets any type of injury, he's not going to suit up. He's not going to yeah. play through shit for the fucking Cavs. So I don't blame him. He's going <laughs> to over exaggerate every ankle twist. And he goes to Portland. It's a beautiful fit. Mm-hmm. And he's winning. He's yeah. guaranteed a playoff and spot. They at have. Least. They would have a front court of what. Nurkic and him? Yep. It's, it's just, and then Damon CJ. Really? And then Mo, probably more Harkless at the if three. If that's the case, then yeah, you can. If you have to, then yeah, go ahead and throw in this here a little. I'm sorry. I think he has high potential. I think he fits perfectly with them. But yeah. now that I'm thinking about on paper, Dame, CJ, Love, Nurkic, man, you can go and get you a mid level wing. Go yeah. sign Wayne. Well, Wayne well no, they were having Harkless. He would still be there. I don't. Let him go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you would need some type of. So I, I prefer him at the four anyway, me, yeah. me personally. If Nurkic uh-huh. is follow his recovery plan, he can return around October. So he'll be there That's for the, the beginning of the season. season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy. You think about how gruesome that injury was that he can be back I mean, yeah, it was gruesome, months. but it was only just a broken leg. Yeah. So broken leg, surgery, heal, you back out there. Um, Lakers? Duh, I don't get it, man. I don't want to watch basketball if Kawhi goes there. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not going to be fun. It will literally, there wouldn't be no reason to watch it. But li- li- look, look, you know, I've always, I've said that he's going to resign. But listen, it makes the most sense for him to go to LA if we're really thinking about it. <laughs> but yeah, just the other side, though. Yeah. Was that? Just the, the Clippers. Side. Clippers? Not to the Lakers. That would legit just be him saying, just give me the ring. Like, they're going to be, they're going to win a championship. I don't want to see it also because of my selfish views. A report came out that part of the pitch LeBron is going to be saying in the meetings is that he'll take the back seat. <laughs> Kawhi, I don't want to see that. I want to see LeBron, revenge. Everybody was throwing dirt on my name. They forgot. Y'all know who I am. I'm the best to ever do this shit. Um, I got them lame ass youngsters off the team. Now I'm about to come at y'all throats. I'm number six now. Like it's all. I just I'm just ready for that. I don't want to see that. And then Kawhi is there. Then yeah. it would just guarantee the West will win the championship for the next few years. Because then once KD and Clay come back, if they resign, then it's just going to be between which which those teams make it to the. I just NBA think it's, finals. if Facts. I was and I don't want to do this because our next episode I got a game that's kind of like this, so I'm going to probably repeat myself. But if I was one of these guys like Kawhi or KD, and I wasn't going to New York. For that, for that matter, my next goal would be to go to L.A., but to the opposite side of where LeBron is, and I'm battling him. We both in L.A., we both going for it, and I'm going to out-fucking-play him and the Lakers because yeah. that's much of a story than joining him. Mm-hmm. If Kawhi went to the Clippers and the Clippers won the championship and beat the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, call him the GOAT. I mean, I don't, don't go that far, but <laughs> call him the greatest in the league right it, now. It makes his it makes his legacy crazy. And he the, he and did the, make the L.A. a Clipper town at that point. Yeah, uh, I don't think that even if they did win the championship, yeah, it's still like it would still be Lakers town. But um, 
The reason I say that is because, listen, like he's already tapped up the Toronto market. He can leave right now, and everybody's still buying New Balance shoes in, in Canada, right? Because yeah. he brought them that championship. And if he is a man about his business, L.A. is the place to be. But we don't know if that's true about Kawhi. We don't know his real priorities. Other than, like, before he got traded, we, it was rumored that he wanted to go to the Lakers or yeah. the Clippers. My thing is this. If he was going to go back, he wouldn't even be having meetings. Because why, yeah. why would you even want to have the opportunity for somebody to sell you something if you that sold on going? You know, like, I wouldn't, if I'm so sold on, like, this is through the wire. House yeah. of Highlights. I don't, I'm not taking no meeting with ESPN because I, I don't even give a damn. Well, I'm so in three of us didn't take the meeting. <laughs> I'm, yeah. so, like, I'm so here that it's like, who cares if they even saying? Do that make sense? Yeah. I don't want to sound crazy. Well, I don't even you, think the Raptors have anything to sell to him. He just won a championship with them. But, but they're they, gonna have a, they're gonna have the last meeting. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm thinking like so. Le, LeBron's free agency last season. He didn't actually go to the meetings. I think Rich Paul went for him with the 76ers. Be, even though the whole world knew he was going to be a Laker, right? We yeah. all knew that he was going to be a Laker. It was just a matter of time. When was he actually going to sign? Mm-hmm. So I th- I literally think that part of taking the meetings is like free dinner at this five-star restaurant. For LeBron and Rich Paul, though. It's some reason that they went. Maybe they were really considering it. Because, I, I mean, we all guessed that he was going to go to the Lakers. But maybe... They looked at the young guys. Was like, let's just see. Let's just see. What I'm so they glad he didn't go there, though. Yeah, because Ben Simmons would have been traded right now too. Yeah, look, Ben Simmons would probably be on the Lakers. They would have probably sw- swapped all their youngest for him, and he would have to go. For <laughs> oh him. my god, that, that would have been crazy. Terrible. Then we had to flop Lonzo, them. Lonzo Ingram yeah. and LeBron be like, yeah, we got Zo and Ingram with me and MB now. I feel like we're gonna really be sexy. We're gonna do our thing, and then he'd have to go through that again. Yeah. So another report came out from Woj just right now. The Denver the Nuggets, Clippers? it's pick. The Denver Nuggets are picking up Paul Millsap's thirty million dollar option, which kind of makes sense. It kind of takes them out of free agency, though. Yeah, it does. Because I thought they were going to decline and yeah. restructure it, though. Yeah. It takes less it money. It don't make sense at all. Uh, but here we are. I, they pretty much I'm pretty, gets them I'm out of free agency. I'm pretty sure we've been saying. Oh, it's a team option. We yeah, it's a team option. It was them. I'm pretty sure we've been saying since the start of the season that they were going to decline that. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, Man. try to sign someone and roll out Trey Lyles at the four. <laughs> or maybe Paul Mills, I was like, bro, if Mike you don't Porter take this Jane. $30 million, then I'm he gone. A... <laughs> and then can they afford to lose him? May... Yeah, defensively, he was their man. But I, I don't know. I, but they pretty much pulled themselves out That's of That's another thing about Kemba Walker, too. Like, the Hornets got nothing for him. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. I don't. I don't. I don't get why he would want to play that. One of the teams we always just to uh, we used to always trade him to was the Nuggets, and you could have got like a Jamal Murray. Now mm-hmm. you get nothing. Yeah. Now you get nothing. And then don't ask him to do a sign and trade because you already lowballed him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And people keep saying that maybe KD will do a sign and trade with the Warriors. That, that makes, makes no sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. That makes no. sense. I don't understand that. The Knicks that. did some shit like that. I would be upset because the reason you go to a team is to play with the people, and if you're yeah. if they're trading everything for you, it's what's mellow. the what's the point? Mellow. So I've never understood the sign and trade, and it has happened before in the NBA. It actually yeah. happened a decent amount, but how many of those times has it worked out to benefit the guy on his new team? Didn't it happen with Jimmy? Didn't we sign and trade Jimmy? No, we just gave trade him straight up. Trade, no. uh, yeah, we just gave him night. straight up That's at the draft for because t- the reason we traded him because he had two years, and we, you can tell the Timber was well. You can convince him to resign, just give him two years, but. A sign of trade, it's, it's Chris very Paul weird. Chris Paul did a sign of trade, but it's, it's sign of trade that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then the sign of trade is where if you're trading half the team. What's I mean, the point? It's really no point. How do you, you feel about the Knicks eyeing Boogie and the Twins? And the Twins? Yeah. It came the out that they were Moore's. eyeing Boogie. Marcus Morris, not Marky. Oh, I thought it said Don't. Twins like with an S on it. No, nah, I didn't see Twins. Uh, I uh-huh. saw Marcus Morris, which uh-huh. has been reported. I don't feel anyway. I don't know why people make a big deal. A one-year deal? Yeah, you have to spend the money in order to get it back next year. Like, we can't not sign nobody and just say, we just going to keep, you have to spend the money. You, you have to spend it. a certain amount to get that money back next year. So, yeah, give it to them one deal. Now, if you said five-year deal, then it's different. But if you don't get these top dudes, you're going to have to spend the money. So, I'm prepared for somebody to get a one-year deal, take the risk on Boogie, let them show out here. Maybe, what if, but let me ask you this question. What if we did that and Boogie was an all-star? What if he averaged 27 and 12 in if four assists? You look like a genius. Right? <laughs> and then, what if he didn't? Yeah. You let him go, yep. right? So what, what, low, low risk, high reward. I thank guess. you. And I'm all with it. I'm all with it. I'm all with it. So uh, you know, it's no big deal to me. Uh, I know I see a lot of people in there trying to joke Troll. around. Yeah, it don't matter to me. We got to spend the money. Go ahead, take some guys, overpaying for a year, see if they can go crazy, and we can find a diamond in the rough. If not, they all yeah, it's gonna all go home next year, <laughs> and we got our money right back. 
And that's all it is. I'm all about rebuilding and keeping the cap. People think because we not gonna get if we don't get Kevin Durant, it's like we all just about to cry and just be fucking suicidal. Like it's not that at all. At all. I'm I'm happy regardless. Of course you want the big guys. Of course you want Kyrie, Kemba. Of course you want that. But if we don't get it, I mean it's nothing I can do. It's no it makes no sense for me to be crying in the corner. I mean, free agency is going to continue to happen. People are going to continue to demand trades. And as long as we have that cap flexibility, we'll be able to always be players in those situations. Always. I'm interested to see how Kyrie and Kevin Durant play together because they're both very sensitive guys. What and makes emotional. you think they're going to play together? Because <laughs> they, like multiple reports, just keep coming out. A report there. came out that Kevin Durant and Ka- Kawhi or Leonard are having conversations. Also, one about Jimmy and Kawhi. I don't know where they could go together. Yeah, we don't even we don't know. That's the best part. We we but can have ideas. What if Kawhi and KD came to New York? That's dangerous. Is it? Yeah. How would you feel about that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't care. The Bulls are still going to be very good. That's all I'm. That's all I'm worried. Wait, about. Wait, we're going to be very good. Very good. good yeah. Eventually. Okay. Yeah. Not I next like year, but I like that because cancer. I mean, you're, you're right. Cancer can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I like cancer's heart. I like his aggressiveness. I, his, his I like everything. everything about him. But don't bring him to the Chicago. He does <laughs> not fit. Do not, bro. We were the worst. Basically, the worst defensive team in the league. We can't afford to just keep signing. Bad then defenders. Just, then we just signed a defensive big man that we would like to roll out. Yeah, man. It just don't make sense. It would just be the same thing in New York. Cantor doesn't want to sit and watch the young guys develop. Exactly. It would be the legit the same shit. Well, and then no, we would just have to trade it him. wouldn't because we were trying to purposely lose. Y'all wouldn't be trying to purposely lose. So he'd get minutes. He probably wouldn't start, but he'd play significant minutes. He'd play back up. Yeah. Uh, I got this little graph before we move on to the next topic. <clears throat> this is the most hated NBA players from every state. Can you guess? Well, Pierre's already looking. Mm-hmm. Illinois. Who's the most hated player in NBA in, in the NBA from if he, if Chicago? He, if he say something wrong, I'm, sla- I'm slapping you. So think about it. The most hated Come player. Come on, Derek. Current player. I don't know. G- guess, bro. You're a Bulls fan, right? Okay. Those Derrick Rose teams that we talked about. Mm-hmm. How are y'all not making it to the finals those years? Oh, LeBron. LeBron is the most hated player. <sighs> My gosh. Year. Who's the most hated player? I was thinking about players from that state. Oh, no. no oh, just in the entire league. Yeah. No, I apologize. Yeah. I thought she just was like, ah. Who's no. the most hated player in Louisiana? Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis yeah. is the right answer. <laughs> I didn't even see Anthony Davis. Yeah, he's all the way down here. Okay. Yep. Good, Who's yeah. the most hated player in Utah? I know. it's. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I I'm, I'm, I'm just looked at it and I don't even know. It's a it's a player that they go against pretty often because they're in the same. Russell conference. Westbrook. It's not Russell Westbrook. Whoa. That is a good guess though. That is a very I didn't good see guess. Russell Westbrook on the map. So um, that's I didn't guess. Oh. He's also a guy that they. That ain't James Harden that was over there. It is James Harden. It is James Harden. Oh, He's man. beat them twice in the playoffs the last two years, and uh, you know people love and hate James Harden. But the last one, the whole what is that Northeast top of the map, yeah. like above New York, which is is Kyrie Irving. What? That's because that's the Boston. Oh yeah, yeah that's the, the Boston. The whole, area. All the Boston area fans. Kyrie Irving is the most hated player in the league. <laughs> that's insane. That's insane. And then a lot of them, you have Kevin Durant for Can like a lot of places. We, we at one point in our life wrote all of these down. What do you Y'all mean? Ever did the test where you had, you had the name? Oh yeah, the name all the oh, states. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was insane. Yeah, at one point in my life, I knew this whole map. Like I still know majority of it. Obviously. It was like, but I knew Maine, South Dakota, specifically where they were. They did like a thing in my school where like you didn't get a certain thing if you couldn't get a hundred percent. Like you could take it as many times as you want. Yeah, no, I think that's every I forget. School. Oh, that's every school. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, yeah, that means nothing to me. If right I see now. the state, I could tell which one it is. But I, I, I can only do that for like Texas and Florida. Ooh. <laughs> Um, just know that Through the Why YouTube channel is coming very soon. And the first video I already have planned out. I ain't even told y'all yet, but that's just reminding me of it. Remind me. Yeah, already. we got one in the vault that will be coming out. But after you mean that, the first, oh. the first one in like the new place and everything. All right, so, so should that be the first one overall? Who knows? We'll discuss. We'll discuss. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss. Um, D'Angelo Russell is officially a restricted free agent. Yes, the Nets gave him a qualifying offer yesterday, so that makes things very interesting. I don't know if they kind of losing faith in the, the Kyrie thing. I don't know if they had a deadline to give him a qualifying offer as well. Um, but who now because of that, whoever offers him a contract, that means the Nets cannot now match it for our viewers out there that mm-hmm. might not understand qualifying offer restricted yes. free agency. Um, seventy six or say they're confident that they can keep Jimmy and Tobias Harris, um, which which is a bit weird to me. I think they could probably keep one of the two, and I'm thinking yeah. it's Jimmy, but mm-hmm. 
he's such a weird player himself where we don't really know his priorities, but I, we can guess that it's the How bad. do y'all feel about the Rockets trying to do the sign and trade for him? I think that Daryl Morey is a genius, but <laughs> pulling this off is damn near impossible. It's damn near impossible. It would just mess up their whole team. I don't like it. So they said that they already have a, a team that's willing to do the Clint Capella deal if yeah. Jimmy Butler agrees. But with that, I, I don't know who I was listening to that said this, but somebody was like, what's the point of having three <laughs> ball dominant heavy, players? ISO heavy ball dominant players who have a reputation of being hot heads. Yep. Why did James Harden get a hot head? I think it's just because of their feud with um with Chris Paul. Oh. I think that's where that comes from. Yeah. But like Chris Paul and Jimmy Butler, yeah, but James Harden just be hooping. Yeah. It's it's so weird. I mean, is he the perfect fit? And no. I don't think so. He's far from the fucking Because he's not going to want to just sit there and spot up. I think I, and you don't piece, want him from that. No. Right? And then their team about analytics, Jimmy Butler taking mid-range, mid-range twos is like that that completely is against what they've done for an entire four or five seasons now. Your one so, and your three would both be mid-range shooters. Yeah, just <laughs> And I think that the, the thing that makes them so good is having Eric Gordon and PJ Tucker who are okay with watching James. And Clint Harper. Capello. And but for the Sixes, if they can get some guys like that that just then, sit around, PJ Tucker, Eric Gordon, would be with JJ crazy. Reddick, and then they, it would benefit from them. See, that's a situation where sign a trade makes sense. Ben Simmons because would because they need to get that, that money off the the um, Rockets need to get the money off, and then the Clippers get to bring in some veteran players that can help 76ers. their younger guys. The Seventy Sixers get to bring in some veteran players for the younger guys. So that's a situation where a sign a trade would work. But at the same time, Philly, there's no real reason for them that to do that at the end yeah. of the day. Why help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Rockets would just be a bad team at that point. Um, not a bad team. Yeah, they but would. Be, I know what you mean. Deep into the playoffs, it, we would be like, oh, look, Jimmy Butler and <laughs> why are we surprised that it's not working now in the Western <laughs> Conference Finals? Uh, but um, Jimmy Butler and the Heat. We saw Dwayne Wade on Twitter flirting with the idea of unretiring if the Heat get Jimmy Butler. Y'all think I'm serious? Or no, that I don't a, take that man serious. I don't know. But then again, maybe I should. I don't. Cause I feel like D Wade wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. He still had a lot in the tank too. Like yeah. he had a good season. So I think he knows that. He definitely knows that. I think he retired simply just for family and like he just had a baby with Gabrielle Union yep. and like all that. That's that's the main reason why he retired. But realistically, if they get Jimmy Butler, it's not like they're a title contender either. So no. the only way to be coming out of retirement basically to just to play to with, his with his homie. Yeah, yeah. To hang with his homie. Um, but you can do anyway. That sure. But you but can also again, do that they, any other time. They in LA. Yeah, they can. Son going to school with Brian. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're going to be really living in LA. Uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't think, it, I don't think it's happening. Um, and then, why would Jimmy Butler? I, to he, I'm sorry. It just man. don't. Seems like Jimmy Butler's just on everybody's radar right now. It, it would more be the reason for him to go there is the is the lifestyle of yeah. Miami more and than anything. Yeah, but I like the Heat though. I just think they have to make some moves. I think you got to get rid of White Side, which I know is easier said than done. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say uh, that. Thirty million but underneath that shit. I think you have a nice Justice Winslow, Bam Adebayo. I like Josh Richardson. Uh, even if you don't plan on keeping him, I like him for trade bait. Um, you know, who else did they just draft? Tyler Harrow. Yeah. So I, I like what they're doing. Oh, they even got KZ Okpala from Stanford. So they, they doing some nice things. You can always rely on Pat Riley. To get the job done. Um, but Andre Iguodala. I want to talk about him. Yep. Okay. First of all, I've been reading this book. It's very good. Uh, very, very, very good. Is it very? So a lot. So I read um, Ray Allen's book. Mm-hmm. And I read it the entirety. Very disappointed because there was no like very behind the scenes. Because like oh. we see them on the court, but we know they have lives outside of that. We, yeah. we don't know what the locker room is really like. So when I'm reading the NBA player's book, that's what I'm looking for. Ray Allen didn't have that. You're looking to figure idiot. out like the Rondo's drama and exactly. all that. Exactly. I want to know the dirty stuff that, that the <laughs> well, public may not know. I'm only two chapters in, but it's going to get there. I can tell by how he's talking because he's already hinted at, um, which is... I don't want to spoil anything, but one of the, one of the things I want to talk to the person we're talking to next episode even kind of deals with this because some 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 similarities there. But Andre Godala was talking, making hints that Lute Olson, his college coach, was purposely holding him back so that he wouldn't leave for the draft early. Interesting. Wow. And he said, "We'll get to that later, though. Like it'll come up yeah. later in the book." Mm. Um, but th- throughout the first two chapter chapters. He's just talking about um, 
you know, being being a kid, his upbringing, different things like that. Y'all know he's from Springfield. Mm-hmm. Um, he's talking about, you know, being a basketball player early, not knowing how good he was and different things like that. How he was real good. Um, and then he came back to school one time, once one year, in like eighth grade, and everybody had a growth spurt except him. And he wasn't that got good no more. He was like, dang. And so he was like, I'm realizing, was I really even that good or was I just bigger than everybody? Not everybody else is big too and I'm not even that good no more. Shit that used to work for me, not working no more. Then he came back to school and was 6'4". Mm. And his coach was like, <laughs> one of his coaches saw him like, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. He was like, damn, why are you so excited? And then he realized, oh, shit, I'm 6'4". He talked about playing J.J. Reddick before he was J.J. Reddick. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, it's gearing up to that. It's gearing up to that for cool. sure because it's very insightful. He talked about a lot of different things. He talked about race. He talked about um, a lot. And I, I just I like it thus far. It's a book that has been hard for me to put down. Um, so you're you're reading it. You're not doing like the audio book thing. I'm reading it. Okay, I, I'm reading. I, I got probably, a notepad. I'd probably download the audio book for like our flight or something. Yeah, I, I, I I'm I'm a reading type of guy. I read with a notepad and I'd be taking notes. Yeah. Um, but the n- shit to take notes upon ain't came up yet because it was just upbringing. I don't care that his mom was yeah. six foot. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> skip those first couple chapters. But um, yeah, you know, I it's just it's the second chapter is called confidence, which I think is the main thing about basketball. Um, because you know Steph Curry was always a good shooter, but when he yeah. got the confidence, he started shooting from forty feet out. Right. So that Mark Jackson brought upon. That's the uh, that's the difference maker. Shout out to Mark Jackson, um, who I brought up. On Twitter, and people was talking to me like Mark Jackson ain't shit, and that's another thing. Why are we even here? Iggy talked about him recently. He did on a podcast. He did. Um, that was after we had the discussion on tw- on Twitter. So what happened was the Washington Wizards. <laughs> we found out that they drafted Ruchi Haramore at nine, and didn't meet with him or have a draft workout. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when he got his introductory press conference, the VP. To some people, jokingly, I'm going to put in air, air quotations, said, you can shoot the three, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Wizards fans are so quick to come to defend. Oh, he was joking, obviously. And somebody like me was like, I don't know if he was joking. Y'all didn't meet with him or have a workout. I don't, I'm not really sure. And then um, I, I was going in like, damn, I'm, I can't believe that I don't have a, a front office job when this, <laughs> you got motherfuckers like this. And I, I think I'm overqualified at this point. And a lot of their fans was like, hey, come on our team, come on our team. And somebody's like... Come to the Thunder. I said, I would take that immediately. Somebody asked me, what's the first move I would make? I said, hire Mark Jackson. Another fan says to me, you always bring Mark Jackson up when there's a coaching vacancy and he ain't even that spectacular. (laughs) So my reply was all of the shit that Mark Jackson was a part of when he first came to the Warriors. Drafting Clay, drafting Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, and Fasses Azili in one draft. You know, um... Taking that team from 23 wins to 47, being a sixth seed, upsetting the third seed Nuggets, which eventually made Iggy come to the Warriors. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but Iggy said that himself. When they got beat, he looked at the team like, oh, they just need one more piece. Hopefully that piece can be me. Wait, wait, wait. He pulled a Kevin Durant? Basically. He, oh, my God, Iggy. Basically. So much respect. He said, gone. you know, he said uh, Steph was baby Jesus. And he said he just loved that, that backcourt. And he loved... Uh, Smart, intelligent bigs like Bogut um, and David Lee at the time, but I guess you could put Draymond in there now. And then he liked Harrison Barnes. So he's like, shit, if I go there, hopefully I can be that piece. Then they had a 50-win season, and then he got fired. You know what I mean? Then I I was so disappointed in my next statement. A lot of our fans hit me and replied and said, you acting like Mark Jackson drafted them. (laughs) A lot of our fans think the coach has nothing to do with the draft process. I, my heart was broken into a million pieces. <laughs> the coach determines who would fit better, right? Like the coach is even if it. you didn't know that, ain't that common sense? Yeah. Wouldn't you? But it's so now you know what we need to do. Actually, we need to instead of doing like this axe the wire shit where everybody asks us where the hell we think somebody's going. We need to start doing some shit. We we y'all ask questions, just simple basketball questions that might not even be simple, but some shit that you would love to know about that you might not know about. 
Instead of asking us where we think LeBron is going to go or what we think Kevin Durant will go, which is just merely guesses, educated guesses, ask us some, some things that you might not know about. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what's the process to this? Because I was, I was a little disappointed and shocked that a lot of people didn't really know the draft process. Because to think that the coach has nothing to do with the draft process and choosing the player that they're going to coach and put in their system is a little outrageous to me. It was a little disappointing. And I was a little shocked. But we did have a bunch of fans who did know the system. But, yeah, you can even, like, there is a footage of, they call them war rooms, where everybody is in there with the whiteboards and they all talking. And it's a collaborative effort. Everything in the front office is a collaborative effort. That's why when new guys come in, like Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson, the automatic question is how long is that coach that was there before them is going to last because he's not their guy. You know, you can't dra- – Dale Morey can't go and hire somebody who is defensive when his his ethics is – Offense. Right, and analytics. So it makes sense that he went and got Mike D'Antoni. They fit together. They're on the same plan, the same wavelength. You know what I mean? That's how it is. When a new GM come in, he hires his coach. The coach hires his guys, the assistants. The GM goes and get a scouting department. And he can communicate with the scout. This is the type of shit I like and what I'm looking for. The scouts throughout the season, because the GM and the coaching is so busy, they're going to go out and scout. The coaches and GMs will come to some games. They might have a, a guy like Zion who is must-see, and they'll go to that shit. But the guys like KZ, Opala, and those type of guys, the scouts will go and watch. Then when the time comes, they all sit. The scouts have done footage, write-ups, and all of this information about all of these guys and prospects for the coaches and GMs, the assistant GMs, the assistant coach. They all collaborate, and then they talk and figure out what's the best plan. No GM is going and drafting a guy without the coach having any input. That's just ridiculous. And coaches are also at all the draft combine things. <laughs> all of, we were there. Yes, we literally we saw there. so many head coaches that there. watching players – they wouldn't be there if they didn't have any decision What's on what Sanders was going son on. Name? Uh, Sanders' son. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I feel disrespectful it. to say that. Yeah, I, always I don't forget remember his Ryan name. Ryan. Uh, Ryan. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it was he Ryan. was there. Spolsha was there. Gentry was uh, there. Gentry was there. Uh, Jim Boylan, Boylan. y'all yep. coach was there. Uh, Fizz was, was there. there. Uh, basically, every coach uh, yeah. except for Greg Popovich. Yeah, every everybody was there. So to think that the coaching. And again, you can even go and do your own research. You can go Google and YouTube draft war rooms where they pick the guy. They have footage of where they make the phone call, and you'll see the entire, not the entire front office, but you'll see a lot. It ain't just the GM in there is basically what I'm saying. It's a collaborative effort. That's why it's important for the new guy, the new GM, to come in and get his people so they're all on the same page. You don't want to go in and you're working with somebody else's hire. That's the main thing the Lakers have their problem with. It's like Luke Walton is cool, but he's not our guy. He's not our guy. That's not our hire. That's all. You got to be an elite coach to be able to just keep that job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is some coaches that come in and they, they communicate and you say, oh, okay, well, this is our vision, but blah, blah, blah. we can do our thing. But, yeah. Free agency starts within a little over 30 hours for us right now, which is insane to think about. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. All right, because it's still tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Right. So we're going to – luckily for us, the first 45 minutes of free agency will be on the ground. So if there's any, like, really quick signings, we'll know that. But then we're going to be up in the air for about two hours, I'm hour buy, and a half. I buy Wi-Fi every time. You buy Wi-Fi? Yeah. I may have to invest, too. I may have to. It's only $30. Maybe I'm not going to invest. <laughs> <laughs> but I think but this no, is going to be super right. fun. See, I'll do the $30. I'm coming back because it's three hours. Yeah. Well, what is the... See, somebody didn't explain that to me. How is it an hour to get there, but three hours to get back? It's something to do with the wind. Change that. Um, Fix it, Earth. <laughs> but um, so the, the going there, what you could do is you buy... 30 minute sessions for like eight dollars. So you don't have to buy like two two sessions, maybe even three at the most, and that's still under thirty dollars. You know, at most it's like twenty four dollars. So that's what I did the first time going there. But um I'm probably just gonna buy like John Wick two and watch that on the plane. That's cool. It's kind of the way I do things. But they had actually pissed me off. Why? I bought the thirty dollars shit. Netflix and YouTube don't work. Mm. Why? There's no reason to have it there. The, the, the Wi-Fi ain't that strong to support it. Oh, to, to scream? <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it, but it's strong enough to go on like Bleach Report, Twitter, for, mm. you know, Instagram, but it ain't strong enough to play you videos. 
So I was a little pissed because I was like, I'm gonna watch Grey's Anatomy. Well, what I do is like sometimes I'll download shows yeah. on your phone. You could you download watch. shows on Netflix and like Hulu, and then you could just watch them. And you can rent movies on iTunes and stuff. Well, we fly with another airline anyway, so this shit might be better, and we'll they see. might have the. I don't shit. know if it can be much. KP better. getting the max for the Mavericks. Yeah, that's dope. That's, I'm happy for him. Uh, last thing. Zion is just Julius Randle's vibes. Cancer. Y'all future That's why, that's why we can't have him, bro. I got a bold take about Zion. Oh, we here for it. See, man, this kid's going to come in and have a Magic Johnson effect on this team. He's going to be one of the youngest MVPs. I'm sorry. Younger than Derrick Rose's MVP? I think so. Are you being dead as serious or are you just talking about your so, ass? Wait, wait, let's see how old he is right now. Well, He's 19, all, right? Magic Johnson was a finals MVP. I thought he was the youngest regular season MVP. That's Derrick Rose. I know. No, no, no. Not that. I meant to say, like, to win MVP as a rookie. He was finals MVP as a rookie. He wasn't oh. league MVP. So okay. Zion is 18. He'll turn 19 next week. So that would give him, to beat Derrick Rose, that would give him basically two seasons or three seasons. Regardless, you think he's going to win MVP in the next three seasons? I think so. Guess we're going to have to wait and see. I don't. I honestly don't think the Derrick Rose thing will be beat anytime soon. I don't think so either. <laughs> Magic Johnson was the MVP in 1987. Was his third year? He was drafted 1980. Oh shit, that's his seventh year. Damn. <laughs> Three-time um, MVP: 87, 89, and 1990. I mean, if that happens, Derrick, you like a genius. But any other time, I don't know, dog. Is he Julius Randle? What well, hops? Why did you say that? Because I just feel like he's going to be so impactful for that team. And they're I think gonna they're going to be able to – I think he's going to be able to get them to the playoffs. After everything that happened last season with AD and all that. I think if they get to the playoffs, Zoe and Ingram will have, like, breakout seasons. I don't think it's going to be because of his ass. I think he's – I think it's going to be because of him. What about his game gives you that, though? And I don't think – The be ability garbage, to guard all to five carry positions. a team to the playoffs as a rookie, six six Zion, inconsistent jumper – He's not – I mean, even in college, his athleticism was still there, but it wasn't overpowering how we see it in high school, which now you put him on a platform where you have even bigger, better athletic guys in the NBA. He's not like a bucket getter. He, you know what I'm saying? He he can score, but he scores the transition and different things. like that. He's not like crossover, pull up, mid-range, three. He's not, he not like that. But so. what if he did come out like that? Like he was just hiding <laughs> it for the NBA. <laughs> and he would be a jackass to be hiding it. <laughs> But yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I think in order for their team to be good, which it has the potential, I think Zion, uh, Zion is definitely going to have to perform at a high level, you know, like uh, Luka Doncic level. Mm-hmm. And then I think Zoe has to come out and have a, his best season. Same with Ingram. And then Drew Holiday has to be Drew Holiday. But even then, you still need Jackson Hayes, young ass, to be effective as a center, <laughs> a young center NBA. You still going to need him to produce. Well, what we do know is that July eighth. The Bulls play against the Pelicans in Summer League, and Kobe White going to dunk on him. Somebody that's not even athletic is going to get <laughs> athletic for that exact reason, just to dunk on Zion. What if Kobe White don't play? How pissed would you be? I wouldn't even be pissed. He got to play at least some of these games. Yeah. Maybe towards well, the end. We'll be there. Croatia has a team coming in. That's interesting. Uh, we're going to be there from when? 11th. The 11th. There's only a few games after that. Oh, yeah, and then the rest is about who wins and shit like that. Yeah, it's not. Oh, that's like the, yeah. The tournament and stuff, but Indiana versus Toronto is the Memphis, first day. I'll watch that. See Javon if he plays, right? Ja Morant, and I'll maybe by this time Ja's not playing because it's the, basically one of the last games of summer league. You know how it works; they'll they'll play the first two, at least the top prospects. Ja gonna play? You think so? He gonna yeah. play all that shit unless he tweaked his ankle like Brandon Ingram did that one summer. But remember, Lonzo Ball played every game and won the MVP. Him and Kyle Kuzma played every game. I'm pretty sure Larry played most of the games too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Markel think, was the only one that didn't. Be, Markel did play. Wendell actually. didn't play all of them either. He did for some reason. I don't remember. If it Soft was, ass. You don't never yeah. play. Are we ever going to see you play? Come on. That's bro. crazy. We still <laughs> don't have an update on Markel. Yeah. Now the GM came out and said something. Like, he don't know what the hell going on. <laughs> yeah. And then That's, Markel posted something with some song about kind of. I don't we know. Don't. I don't know. It's such a weird story. I don't know if we'll ever know the the specifics of. Markel Maybe he'll books. come out with a book and explain. I don't. I won't even read the shit. I need a sit down interview. I need a documentary with Rachel Nichols. No, nah, well, but through the, the wire. Through the wire? Ooh. Through the wire. Okay. Hey, HOA's got an amazing film crew. Yes. So if you do want to go through it, Mark Hill, hit us up, Lucas, bro. Lucas, Sam. Shout out to everybody over there. Shout out my boy Josh. Been holding it down. 
Um, shout out to Jackie. Shout out to Doug. Shout out to Omar, CJ. Who else am I? Not, I don't want to forget Drew, nobody. Sam, Jeff. Drew. I named them. Oh. See, now you put yourself in a weird spot because if you did forget just one person name. I didn't. Name. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Thank God I didn't. Uh, other Sam. Short, uh, two, uh, two times. No, no, not other Sam. Small Drew. Tall Drew, small mm-hmm. Drew. Matter of fact, call Drew. Where's Waldo? Where's okay. Waldo? We out. We out. <laughs> Let me fall, yo. Make you fall, though. I bought a lot, but nah. <laughs>